Hello everyone! Welcome to Clove episode 2. So here's the thing, I already have quite a bit of footage for episode 2 filmed. In fact, the main piece is pretty much already done. Enjoy the past. But basically, we're focusing on the shirt. I have, of course, I'll put the I'll put this up over here so you, you can actually see it. And then, you know, instead of just gesturing at the screen. Right, okay. Here's me patterning the sleeve of the shirt and the shirt in general. Enjoy that, please. I'm starting out with just a basic knit sleeve and I'm gonna fold it in half and line up the wrist with the bottom of the armhole to find the elbow. I'm then gonna mark a straight across seam from there. After that, on the back side of the pattern, I'm going to draw a line approximately in the middle of that. I'm kind of using this notch as a guide to find the back of the arm. Once I'm happy with that line, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a curve at the top to give it some personality. After I'm happy with that line, I'm gonna start patterning the bottom yoke piece. So I'm using that first line that I drew as a guide for the middle and I'm picking a measurement and then I'm gonna make an exact 45 degree angle here. Easiest way to do that with one of these rulers is to literally use the grid as a guide. Next, I'm gonna measure my own hand to find the extension for the sleeve that goes up onto the hand. I'm gonna measure the length and make sure that it matches across my whole hand. Then I'm gonna add the length to the pattern. After that, I measure my wrist to make sure that the sleeve pattern is accurate, and then I measure my hand, spread out approximately where I want the sleeve to end. Because I know this pattern fits my wrist, I'm just going to add the difference to each side of the bottom of the sleeve. These second marks that I'm making are just straight up from the hem of the sleeve so that I can get a more accurate measurement. Then I'm going to draw in our new guidelines. This is me deciding if I wanna angle the yoke piece now or if I'm just gonna add the space to it when I transfer the pattern out. Once my basic pattern is drawn on here, I'm going to transfer the yoke to a new piece of paper. You see me just drawing little lines. It's because I'm gonna go back in with my ruler since I know all of these lines should be straight. I'm also sticking with one quarter inch seam allowance because this is a knit and because I'm using my overlock to sew it, I know that the easiest way to do that is at a quarter inch. For the rest of the sleeve pattern, I know that I don't want to have a seam anywhere else but here, so I'm going to transfer the smaller piece onto this piece of paper. I'm also making sure I have the elbow and the wrist properly marked out, just in case there's any curve to them at all transferring the pattern like this. Once I'm all done transferring it onto a new piece of paper, I'm going to line up the underarm seam and attach the pattern pieces together, because it's just going to be one piece now instead of two. This is when I decided to transfer this excess for the handpiece into this seam. So you see me just adding the divided measurement from each side onto the yoke piece, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the larger sleeve piece. 
I'm basically taking one side of that measurement that I added on earlier and I'm dividing it in half because I'm taking it from one seam to two seams. So I only need half the amount on each seam. I used the exact same material for the sleeves and the hood to keep everything cohesive throughout the costume. For the rest of the shirt, I used a classic bodysuit pattern that I have that I know fits me pretty snugly. And I pinned it on and then I just drew a new side seam so that it'd be less fitted. I did the front first and then when it was all cut out, I laid it on top of the back so that I could transfer the exact same line that I had drawn onto the front piece and cut out the exact same type of piece. Okay, I have one sleeve all sewn up. Because it has these like really awkward angles to it, I actually am sewing it first on my sewing machine at a base stitch and then just pulling it out as soon as it's done. Here's my tip for this, because obviously this is all trial and error, is you wanna actually not attach the yoke first. Well, I mean, okay, you can, but I think the easiest thing is to do this seam, the sleeve seam first, and then, because then you'll have to like take off this a little bit to sew up this. And then once this is all sewn, this is much easier to attach. But I am actually gonna go attach, do this seam, and then I'll do this seam and then I will take it to my overlock. So I just flipped this to test it and it's literally perfect. The fit is like kind of insane. Like if I just pull this up my arm, like it fits on my hand perfectly. And I know I did it with measurements, but it's kind of insane. And then this, the way that it like lays on my elbow as well, like it needs ironed obviously, but it's like, it's pretty freaking perfect. Da, 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 da. We have a shirt. I'm kind of scared that this material is going to stain the uh, the white because um, I think it's staining my hands. But you know, I have enough that I can remake this if I need to. And also this is supposed to be gray, not black. Next, I need to do the hello on the collar. And then I also need to do the cuffs. So I need to do these cuffs. I forgot that part of it is white and part of it is black. Okay. The pieces that are white go along, let's see, this section here. There's like a, another piece of white on top of the piece of white. This is so pixelated. And the piece of white that's on top overlaps with the, with the uh, seam for the back panel piece. And then the front piece is like just a little bit wider than the, than the studs. you enjoyed the past. So here is where we're at. I think this is two layers of paint. I like it, but I need to put the fluorescent paint over top of it to get this same yellow. But other than that, the shirt is pretty much done. Oh, I just need to, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to finish the hem of the shirt or I'm at least going to try it on first, but these sleeves, I need to finish 
the hem of the sleeves, and then I need to add the cuff to it. I finished one sleeve. So I finished the hem of it. And then I also went through and I top stitched all of this and it looks so nice, but it looks, when I'm top stitching it, it's ridiculous. So <laughs> let me just, let me just show you what I have to do to top stitch this because of the way that I patterned the sleeve. It's hilarious, honestly. pattern the sleeve cuff, I first pinned the sleeve pieces together and then I made sure I was taking a very accurate measurement of both pieces of the sleeve since that would count towards the pattern for the cuff. The first piece I patterned was the white piece, so I just marked out how wide I wanted it on the very bottom of this paper, and then I marked out the initial width of the side of the sleeve it needed to go on. From there, I added the little extension where it goes over the top of the sleeves. When I added my seam allowance on here, I did it the cheap and dirty way, where I added all of it onto one side, since I knew it was just going to be a rectangle. For the little black piece, I made it a little skinnier, but I did it the exact same way. I also based that measurement on the size of the studs that I knew were going on it. To attach it, I just lined it up where it needed to go, pinned it on very carefully, and then sewed it on with a zigzag stitch. I did not actually attach the black piece to the sleeve, just because I knew the studs had a chance of falling out and I didn't want to have to unpick something just to put on new studs eventually. I'm sure I could have glued them on or something, but I didn't feel like it at the time. Then I noticed a tiny little blue tag on the sleeve, so I just used the same blue paint from the jacket to paint it on. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna call this done for the shirt. I may end up doing another round of blue paint there, but otherwise I think it's good. That's very exciting. Here, let me take the jacket off so we can get just the shirt effect. Some of this paint is still wet, so that was like a little terrifying, but ta-da! I think this ended up gorgeous, perfectly gorgeous. And then the fitting also was a total guess, but I think it looks good. Like, and the sleeves, the sleeves are like my pride and joy. The cuffs, oh, I need, I need to actually like decide how I'm doing the actual the cuffs, but other than that, it's done. I'm probably gonna paint them. It looks so good. It looks so good. Yay, I'm so glad I decided to do it like this um, instead of doing like two separate shirts because that would have just been a lot and this is gonna work perfectly with the jacket. Yay! Um, I hope everyone is enjoying all of the different lengths of the videos. I can only assume I'm filming the jacket and the shirt video simultaneously, but I can only guess that I got paint on my camera. Oh my God, sorry. I can only guess that the jacket video is exceptionally longer than the shirt video because the jacket took forever and the shirt took like a day and a half, if that. Next, I think we're gonna do, I'm still deciding if I'm gonna do leggings or tights and then i think i already have the shorts i want to use they're in like a bag over there i was gonna donate them thank god i didn't i hope i didn't at least okay i'm gonna put stuff back away now <laughs> 